time when the oceans drank Atlantis and the rise of the sons of Arius, there was an age undreamed of. And on to this, Conan, destined to bear the jeweled crown of Aquilonia upon a troubled brow. It is I, his chronicler, who alone can tell thee of his saga. Let me tell you of the days of high adventure. G7 back here. Hey man, today I have a tale of glory and a tale of victory where a few determined men stood against many hordes of evil women. Guys, the topic of today's video is the real truth about steroids. This is number five in the 10 video series. And this is poor people versus rich people. Now, you guys might think that's a strange title when we're talking about, you know, the real truth about steroids. But I want to bring this up to you about the mindset required to take steroids and be successful when you take them. And it's very interesting because my life is congruent with being a barbarian, warrior, king, there's a guy named Elliot Holtz. He, teach, he has a course teaching you how to be your own king. I suggest you look into that. And uh, there's also other guys teaching you how to get in touch with your inner animal. And the reason this is important, guys, is because there was a saying when I was, I was stationed in Texas where I did the first leg of my special forces training. It says, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, but the size of the fight in the dog. Let me, let me repeat that again for you. It's not the size of a dog that is in the fight, but it's the size of the fight that is in the dog. And I wanted, I wanted to repeat that so you can understand the mentality required to 
take steroids properly. And before I get into that, I wanted to tell you guys about, uh, there's a thing called affirmations. And hopefully if you've been following this series, you're starting to really understand that your mind plays a very huge piece in the proper way of using steroids. Like your mind is the key that's going to unlock your genetic potential and your greatness and can even take you past your greatnesses. But what it is, guys, is if you repeat something enough to yourself, your subconscious will actually start to believe it. That's why they got a thing called fake it till you make it, right? While you lack the confidence and the competency in an area, you positively say to yourself, and this is best done, first thing in the morning upon rising, within 30 minutes of rising, and within 30 minutes of going to bed. And what I do, guys, is I take it a step further. Anytime I get a break and I'm by myself, I go out into my car. And I'm normally like a, I'm working as a consultant, so what I try to do is um, I work for about three hours and then I'll take like a 15 minute break just to decompress and get my thoughts together. So I'll go out into my car and I'll say, I'll say a positive affirmation. And this is why I keep playing this Conan the Barbarian music for you guys because it's repetitive and it's consistent and it's regular. So when you get into the theme of the movie, the, the music, it's actually called, the name of that music that I'm playing is called um, Anvil of Crom. Crom was uh, Conan the Barbarian's god. Anvil is like a, like a mission statement kind of. So anyway, guys, it's, um, I want you to understand the mentality here. And so the reason I bring up poor people versus rich people, um, I've been around both in my life. And so we're going to start out with the rich people. And the reason being is because that is who you guys are seeing using steroids. Because quite as it's kept, man, steroids are very expensive. And that's why when the guys were... Uh, making their ignorant comments <laughs> on my channel. Um, I share with you guys, so I'm originally from a foreign country and we moved to the east coast of the United States, specifically New York City. And my dad had uh, eight brothers and seven sisters. He was the baby. And we're mixed, like I told you. And uh, if anything, uh, what what happens is when we get here to this country, um, if you look at our if you look at our ethnicity, I think the closest thing that we would be to in, in the United States is Belizean. You know, but um, a, a lot of people in my family categorize us as, as as Puerto Rican, and some even say Cuban. But I mean, it's just sharing with you the mixture is such that. We can't really pin it down, but the reason I say Belizean, when you look at this guy, Elliot Holtz, that's kind of how our family uh, structure looks, that mixture that he has, right? And I bring that up because, like I said, he has um, a YouTube channel, he's a website, he has a company where he trains strength athletes, man. He trains you to be what he calls the best version of yourself to get in touch with your inner animal. And he is a proponent of um, positive affirmations daily. And so, like I said, the reason I bring up rich people first is that's who you normally are seeing. When you go into these gyms or you're watching on, on television, you're seeing the NFL or NBA or uh, Major League Baseball or even hockey players do or track and field athletes. Like, you're seeing all these exposés where all these athletes are coming up positive for use of steroids. So you as a young man are saying, Hey man, I'm there, darn it, man. It's how they got huge, man. I'm going to do it as well. And what my video series is going to do for you young ignorant guys is to fill in the rest of the steps. There are a lot of steps prior to taking steroids. But back to the topic of the rich people versus poor people. Rich people, man, have affluence, and whatever they want, they get it. 
They don't even have a desire. They just want it because they're rich and they get it. And, you know, the whole thing is um, you take these movie actors, which I think has really proliferated the utilization of steroids. But you take guys like uh, Brad Pitt and the guy, uh, I think his name is Hugh Jackman. He played Wolverine and then the guy who played Thor. And then uh, even, uh, what's his name? The guy that was in Fight Club with um, Brad Pitt, Ed Norton. He even took some steroids. I seen him in a movie called American History X. He was jacked up. And then uh, recently, uh, what's his name? Uh, ben Affleck, he, he got juiced up for Batman. And then Gerard Butler got juiced up for 300. And then even your boy Vin Diesel. And last but not least, The Rock, man, he is Jack. So you look at these rich people and they just take them because they want to play a part in a movie and they know that with the, the they hire a trainer and a nutritionist. They got, they got two different highly paid professionals that know how to get results in a very short period of time. And so these guys are juicing up and like I was saying, I was saying in my other videos, guys, it takes about a good uh, six to eight weeks for the steroids to really, really, really kick into your body and you experience the hypertrophy by training properly with overload, muscular overload, whether you do that through intensity or pace or velocity or time under tension. See, I'm using a lot of terminology that I would hope you guys will stop the video and Google it because when I see a lot of I see ninety five percent of the guys that are training and I train I train at fighter gyms five of them out here specifically and I see a lot of guys man even though uh, they're training hard they're stagnant because they aren't um, looking at different ways of shaking up their training and as as Arnold said even Arnold said he said when you find a routine that works you stick with it. But every 90 days, dude, you got to do something a little bit different to shock and twist your body and uh, tweak your body and trick your body, right? So rich people, what they do is they hire these nutritionists and trainers. And then they, they the trainers know which steroids to get them. And they know, uh, and the nutritionists know how to feed them for when they're on steroids. And so they make a miraculous transition, man, in, in, in eight weeks, which is like two months, dude. Like their physiques are totally different from what you've seen them previously right and so okay we know that the rich people who can get whatever they want they want some steroids they want to get in shape for the summer so they'll do that I bring that up first because that is not repeat that is not the mentality nor the philosophy nor the mindset that you as a young man must have to get on steroids and to have and to have them work successfully for you so you want to look at a, a risk reward ratio you want the reward to be so great that the risk is worth it not the other way around and so if you're a young rich dude listening to my fucking video sit your ass down take some notes and shut the fuck up you gonna, might learn something because money can't buy everything dude yeah money can buy most things but it cannot buy you the desire to want to take your body to the next level that you're willing to do whatever it takes. So now we're going to talk about poor people. And just so you know, on my mother's side of the family, she's West Indian. And she's mixed with, she's, she's West Indian and American Indian. So my, my grandfather on my mother's side was actually West Indian from the West Indies. And my, my, uh, my grandmother uh, was an indigenous Indian. So on my mother's side, I actually have um, cousins that are like seven foot tall. Going from like six, six, all the way up to seven feet. Beast mode, right? Beast mode. So uh, why do I bring that up? Last week, my one of my first cousins um, who actually lives in, in uh, Washington, D.C., and his wife is a doctor. She's a practicing internal medicine physician. 
Um, he, he flew out to California with his, uh, his wife's family reunion that Saturday, which was um, last Saturday. Then it was their anniversary. I think it was their fifth year anniversary. And it was his birthday, man. It was fucking awesome shit. Like, the synchronicity, right? So anyway, he comes out here. And his his brother is actually seven foot beast mode. He did not make it to the uh, NBA because um, you know back east, man. There's a movie I want you to um, I'm, I want you guys to watch. I'm put the link into it. It's called Rebound, and it's the story of the one of the greatest basketball players that ever lived, but he didn't make it to the NBA because of drugs in New York City, man. Because growing up in the hood, there's a lot of um, desperation and uh, just hopelessness, man. So even, there's a saying, you can take the boy out of the hood, but you can't take the hood out of the boy. Meaning that even if you have all the talent in the world, and you're being offered scholarships, man, and all this stuff. If you really don't believe in yourself that you're worthy of it, you're going to sabotage your your success. There's, there's, there's a theory that's called the fear of success. Some people have a, such a lack of self-love and self-belief that they sabotage their success because deep deep down they don't feel they're worthy of it and uh, I think my cousin man my first cousin was one of those dudes because growing up I was uh, I was two years behind him in, in, uh, in school and I lived in his shadow and I, that's just to give you an example of the genetics that I have in my family and just the beast mode that I, I told you I used to get my ass kicked by my cousins man and just people on the street just getting my ass handed to me but by beast. So then when I meet a regular dude, man, he, he don't have a chance. When you get used to getting your ass whooped by beast, you have a certain level of, of tolerance. You have a pain tolerance, man. And you've been surrounded by the best. So anything less than that, right, it's not going to impress you. So anyway, um, his brother's seven foot. He didn't make it to the NBA, but he had a son. Uh, who made it to the NFL, and his son is six foot eight, two hundred seventy-five pounds, man. He's got a vertical leap. He's got hops. He can run, right? Anyway, he's been playing in the NFL for the last um, couple of years, and uh, he gets he gets you know he gets picked up in the in the draft pick, but then he ends up getting cut, right? And so, um, my first cousin, man. Him and his brother, they came up with a, a formula to actually get the dude into the NFL, right? And um, basically, I don't mind sharing this with you guys because it goes hand in hand with the, the, the real truth about steroids and how to use them properly. So, and this is what I've told my kids as well, but they're still younger. But I'm, I'm going to get them all like um, athletic and academic scholarships so they can go on to do great things. But here's the formula, guys. First of all, what you want to do is in your sport of choice, even if it's bodybuilding or powerlifting or martial arts, you want to research your heroes. You have to have a hero. You have to have someone that you look up to that you aspire to be. This was the formula Arnold had. Arnold looked up to a guy named Reg Park. And what you do is you get all the material you can get on them. You get their books. Um, you get their any DVDs they have, CDs, MP3s. You, you watch their movies, and if you can, you get their biographies or documentaries, man. You study them, man. You study them. And, uh, you know, you like what my cousin did was had his nephew uh, review the sports tapes and, and watch all the games and just really get into their bio. And what you want to do is you want to place yourself in their body. And what does that mean? You want to have yourself in the mindset that you are going to emulate what they're doing and eclipse it. And then what the second thing he did was he had the, uh, he had his nephew going to all types of sports training and conditioning camps, summer camps for football, um, hired personal trainers. Like for my kids, even though I'm a personal trainer, I hired personal trainers to train them. And let's say you're a poor kid because I'm talking about poor kids. Let's say you don't have the money for that. Then you want to go to the Boys and Girls Club. You want to go to any kind of a community center. And you want to, you know, anytime, any any sport that you're aspiring to be in, 
Anytime you get an opportunity, you play it. That's what people don't understand. You have to immerse yourself into your athleticism, right? Immerse yourself into it. And it's called concentrated focus. You just focus on that. And here's the reason that poor people are successful. And back to the thing when the guy was, was clowning my uh, Cali Muscle video talking about their steroids in prison. Yes, there are steroids in prison. Let's get this straight. But the guys that have them, they have money, man. Whether, they, they, whether they're crystal meth dealers, heroin dealers, cocaine dealers, whatever. They got money, dude. And so, in prison, you're training as if your life fucking depends on it. But they cannot, even though they have money, they can't get enough of it. Like where Phil Heath and, and uh, Kai Green and those type of guys, the volume that they're taking, right? They just get a little bit of it to get an edge because that's what steroids were used for initially, just to get an edge. But the poor people that are in prison, dude, they're not getting no fucking steroids, bro. So I want to focus on the poor people because um, my he, this guy would be my second cousin, the six foot eight, two hundred seventy five pound dude. And when he got to the NFL, they bulk him. Get this guys, they bulk him up to two ninety five. Follow me, guys. When he got to the NFL, they bulked him up to two ninety five. So my my cousin and his wife, who's a doctor. They met with this guy who is an NFL football scout. So he scouts um, like that movie Jerry Maguire where he gets people their contracts and stuff. Yeah, so, um, you, you know, we were just talking about him. And he's saying, this is what he said. Listen to this, guys. He said that my cousin has to understand there's two types of people that make it to the NFL. There's a type, like I was saying, like, the rich people that are happy to be there. And then it's the type that's like there to feed their family. And he gave numerous stories. And my so did my uh, my cousin's wife. This NFL scout. He gave numerous stories of when he's scouting this, these talented dudes from the hood. Like he goes to their house. There's roaches and rats. is in poverty. One of the parents is dead or on drugs or in prison. The other one's a prostitute or on drugs. There's no food in the house. A lot of kids and no food. They're dirty, stinky. And this kid is so fucking hungry. He ain't got no food. He is so fucking hungry that whatever he's got to do to eat. Yo, you mean if I eat, if I get the, if you give me a ball and I run and whoever's in my way, I knock him down or, or evade him. Then I get paid some money so I can eat. They are hungry. They are hungry to get out of the hood. They are hungry to get out of the poverty. And so what this scout was saying to my cousin and his wife was that they have to instill in my second cousin that dude, the guy who is across the line from him during the scrimmage is preventing him from eating. And this, my friends, is the difference between rich people and poor people when you're taking steroids. When you, if you are poor and you're listening to this video, audio, then you have to dig down into the deep, dark recesses of your mind and understand that you are taking steroids so that you can get to a level of financial abundance. You're going to use the steroids as your vehicle to take your body to where you can get paid some money for whatever you're going to do. So whether it be bodybuilding or powerlifting, you know, you want to be like... Um, you want to be like Jay Cutler, man. Like, I think he's one of the smarter bodybuilders who has, when you look at the, when you look at bodybuilders who've made money from bodybuilding, he's a multimillionaire because what he did was he, he followed Arnold's footsteps just like The Rock. He leveraged his muscles and the money he made from his muscles to become a big time real estate investor. Rock, The Rock leveraged his muscles to get into the WWE. And then from there to become a big time actor. Just like John Cena, right? You see a pattern? Arnold leveraged his muscles to become one of the top box office attractions. Then to become governor, right? So when you, when you are poor and you're deciding to make an investment in yourself to use some steroids. Then you have to keep the, uh, the hunger, the eye of the tiger at the forefront 
and everything that you do must be concentrated and focused on the fact that you will use these steroids to succeed in your life. And any man or woman that is in your way, not only will you run through them, you're going to run over them. Because they're preventing you from eating. And hopefully from the intensity of my voice, you guys can understand what I'm trying to say. Poor people from the hood. And even my cousin, his wife, gave examples of the, 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 the kids that live across the street from them. They're, they're pro they lived in the projects like me. Their project door, front door was always open. And they never once saw the parents of the kids. And it was like, they explained to me there was like six brothers and the two sisters. And they were always dirty and funky and stinky with dirty clothes on. And they never had food to eat, man. And they were hungry. You could just look at them and look like those um, starving fucking kids from Africa, bro. And the only thing that kept them alive was um, back east when you're in impoverished neighborhoods. They have this thing called the lunch school program. And what they do is um, you get the fed lunch at school. Now it's expanded to breakfast and lunch. And now they even have after school programs at like the Boys and Girls Club or community centers that provide snacks. And so you never get to the point where you're full, but at least you have some food in your belly, but you are always hungry. Like Arnold said in one of his movies called Stay Hungry. Always stay hungry. And that's what happens to a lot of professional athletes that come from the hood once they get the money and the fame. And what I call it, the bitch boy lifestyle and living in the lap of luxury, they lose that hunger and they lose that edge. Because you got to remember the guy that's in number two, three, or four, or fifth position, he's still hungry, man. He is still hungry because he's not getting paid where you're getting paid. And he wants to get paid. So he's going to utilize everything in his power. So to end this video, guys, if after listening to my video series you decide to still use anabolic steroids use it to fuel your hunger don't be like a rich bitch boy who just uses them because he wants to use them because he wants to look pretty right use them because you're hungry and you want to get fed and whoever's in front of you whether it's in the cage on the mat in the boxing ring on the field or on the court you look at them like this. You're preventing me from eating and feeding my family. And I'm going to do whatever it takes. And you take that intensity into all of your workouts. All of your training. And when you have to eat clean food, which becomes boring, over and over again every three hours, day in and day out. You reach deep down into that hunger to keep you fueled. So you can reach all the dreams and goals that you need to have a lifestyle that you desire so you no longer be hungry. Until next time, OG7 back. Out.